Ethiopian Airlines set to launch Nigeria's new national carrier, Nigeria Air. With underdeveloped roads and rail networks, due to financial issues, terrain, and rainy seasons, airlines have proliferated in Africa. Historically, the national airlines of colonial powers in Africa served their colonies. During the period of colonization, some joint carriers were established such as Central Africa Airways, East African Airways, Air Africa, and Rest African Airways. Following the independence of African countries, national governments began to establish their own airlines using the knowledge of aircraft, the airline industry, and financial capital originating from the Europeans, as they desired to have their own flag carriers. In most cases, European airlines had colonial influences on African airlines, and so their departure from the continent led to losses in African airlines due to mismanagement and poor operation. Often, profits go into the general operating funds of their respective countries, while many governments provide insufficient capital for their airlines. Due to the challenges in raising financial capital and lack of government infrastructure, government participation is crucial in the formation airlines. African airlines therefore rely on profitable international routes to subsidize less profitable domestic routes, most of which work for very small communities. Before we continue, do hit the subscribe button for more interesting stories about the African continent. Within Africa, airline alliances tend to include codshare agreements between multiple airlines in one consortium and one African carrier owning equity in another. Few African airlines take part in alliances with non-African carriers as a result of the fact that only few of them are able to attract capital investment and so are unable to establish attractive networks to airline alliances. Nevertheless, some African flag carriers have been able to become part of global airline alliances like South African Airways, which became a member of Star Alliance in 2006, Kenya Airlines, which became an associate member of Sky Team in 2007, and a full member in 2010, Egypt Air, which became a member of Star Alliance in 2008, followed by Ethiopian Airlines in 2011 and Royal Air Maroc, which became part of Onworld in 2020. Following several failed attempts to launch a profitable airline, the Nigerian administration has enlisted Ethiopian Airlines to assist its new national carrier takeoff. The development of a national airline was among President Muhammadu Buhari's campaign pledges when he took up the office in 2015, and so he is keen to see that the promise is implemented before he leaves the office in May 2023. First unveiled at the UK Farnborough Air Show in 2018, the Nigerian Air Project has been suspended for months as concerns were raised by critics over its relevance. Sustainability and burden on the government budget with an estimated startup cost of over $300 million. However, the project has currently been resumed with Ethiopian Airlines revealed to be the preferred bidder for its shares. Wholly owned by the country's government, the Ethiopian airline is Ethiopia's flag carrier. It started operations on the 8th of April 1946, after being founded on the 21st of December 1945 as Ethiopian Airlines. In order to maximize efficiency, enhance customer service to a global standard, and ease long-term planning, the Ethiopian Airlines has been organized as a fully owned aviation holding group by the Ethiopian government. Its initial group was made up of the Ethiopian Airports Enterprise, the Passenger Airline Company, Cargo Airline and Logistics Company, Ethiopian Aviation Academy, Ethiopian In-Flight Catering Services, Ethiopian MRO Services, and Ethiopian Hotel and Tourism Services. The Ethiopian Airlines has its current head office at the Bol International Airport and intends to construct a new office facility. In 2010, it was named Africa's most profitable airline for the year by Air Transport World and was later praised by AFRAA for its sustained profitability over recent years. Adding to its carrier's main activities, the Ethiopian airline also generates income from providing aircraft maintenance to foreign airlines and training specialists for both foreign and Ethiopian trainees. 
The airline recently adopted a mission 2025 as a development strategy under which it anticipates increasing its fleets to 120, number of destinations to 90, carrying more than 18 million passengers and 720,000 tons of cargo with 17,000 employees. This vision also considers a fourfold expansion of the trainees' capacity building in the airline's aviation academy. Ethiopian Airlines has signed a number of continental and intercontinental deals, which has made it a prominent airline among others. Among these deals are the 2013 deal for the acquisition of 49% of the Malawian carrier Air Malawi, the January 2018 partnership agreement with the Zambian government to assist in the relaunch of Zambia Airways and own 45% of its stake, the 2018 strategic partnership with ASKI Airlines and the Guinean government to establish a startup carrier Guinea Airlines, the joint venture entity of its cargo and logistical co with DHL to provide ground logistics to and from airports, seaports, and the rapidly expanding industrial parks of the region, the 2018 agreement with the German Aerospace to set up a facility that will manufacture and supply aircraft seat covers, safety belts, carpets, and other interior parts, and the 2021 interline agreement with the South African carrier Semair. Nigeria Air. Announced at the Farnborough Air Show in 2018, Nigeria Air is a proposed airline and flag carrier in Nigeria. In July 2018, its name and logo was unveiled at the Farnborough Air Show in the United Kingdom, and its operation began in the December the same year. Created as a business and not a social service, the airline is privately operated and doesn't involve the Nigerian government. Its full responsibilities for operation is particularly for its investors and government of Nigeria, owns not more than 5% of its shares. The airline is targeting 81 potential destinations and an adequate start of operating 15 of the 30 countries in which Nigeria has functioning BSAs. Before the COVID-19 crisis, multiple airlines in Africa were in poor financial shape. Many were driven to the brink by the ensuing loss of revenue. Before the outburst of the pandemic, South African Airways entered voluntary business rescue in December 2019 after years of financial losses before it relaunched operations with investment from private partners in 2021. While plans to nationalize Kenya Airways collapsed amid a $1 billion debt in 2021, Air Mauritius became the first African airline to enter voluntary administration as a result of the pandemic. From the 2018 plans signed by the then Ethiopian Airlines CEO to Old Geber Mariam, to find new African carriers across the continent by helping countries to set up new companies or by overhauling existing ones, the Ethiopian Airlines has so far invested in carriers in Malawi, Zambia, Mozambique, Chad, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and Togo. Even as many African flag carriers have struggled to stay afloat, the Ethiopian Airlines has recently expanded as it now flies to 127 global destinations and more than 60 African destinations. With a population of above 200 million people, Nigeria represents an important market for Ethiopian Airlines, which allows it to add new routes and develop a center in Africa's largest and most populous country. Being a huge market for Ethiopian Airlines, the airlines have been operating flights to Nigeria immediately after independence in the 1960s. They currently fly to four destinations in Nigeria, including Abuja, Lagos, Enugu, and Kano. This is the third time Nigeria is attempting to realize its dream of flying its flag carrier to the world's major airports. In the 1980s, Nigerian Airways, its first national airline, was one of the leading airlines in Africa serving African and European destinations. But due to mismanagement and competition from non-African airlines, it became liquidated in 2003. A few years later, a partnership with Richard Branson, a billionaire UK businessman, took to the skies with much fanfare. But after a while, a change of government from Oluskan Obasanjo to Umaru Yar Atuwa led to a row broke with Virgin Atlantic, which promoted the British Airlines to sell 49% of its stake in the venture. 
Virgin Nigeria was eventually rebranded to Nigerian Eagle Airlines and later Air Nigeria, which eventually laid off all its staff and ceased operation in 2012. The Terms of the Deal Following the new deal, Ethiopian Airlines will own 49% of the stakes in Nigerian Air, while the Nigerian Sovereign Fund keeps 46% and the federal government the remaining 5%. Nigeria plans to launch a service between Abuja and Lagos and have 30 aircrafts within four years with an initial capital of $300 million. Also included in the latest deal, Ethiopian Airlines will manage the airline and make available aircraft to senior executives, cabin crews, and technical personnel who will all be trained in a $100 million training academy on the outskirts of Addis Ababa. The code-share agreement between the Nigerian government and the Ethiopian airline will also see Nigeria Air collect passengers from regional and domestic destinations and feed them into Ethiopian airline routes. Effects on Nigeria Cooperating with a regional juggernaut like Ethiopian Airlines could make it hard for domestic carriers to compete with Nigeria Air. Also, training, funding, technical support, Provision of fuel and ground handling by Ethiopian Airlines will provide the new carrier with a competitive advantage. With collaborations like this, it is certain that Africa, and not just Nigeria, will be at a higher level in the nearest future as far as the air industry is concerned. This development will of course contribute to Nigeria's growing economy and that of Africa in general. Our message then, to all Africans is of assurance growth is happening and soonest, you will experience the Africa you've always hoped for. If you enjoyed watching this video, please do not forget to leave a thumbs up, subscribe and become a member of our growing diverse community here on Think Rich Africa. Thanks for watching and see you in another interesting video.